Hello friends, this video on diversity in living world part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We will study about classification. We will see what is classification. So now you are understanding, right, that how since biology is a science of living organisms, so I'm just trying to tell you how are we going to study about living organisms. So to make this study simpler, the all these techniques were introduced: nomenclature, identification, classification. So that is all we are going to study in this lesson. So what is classification? It is the process of grouping things into categories based on some easily observable characters. Now, how are we going to divide organisms into groups? On the basis of common characters. So all those groups, all those organisms which will share a common character, they will be put into the same group. For example, in your school, when the students are divided into different classes, on what basis are they divided into classes? Now, all students of the same age are put into one class. So, all students of class 1 are of same age. All students of class 2 are of same age. Again, all students of class 3 are of same age and so on. Right. So, based upon their age, all those who share a common age will be in the same group. So, similarly, this process of classification also works. So, let us try to understand what is the before we go ahead with classification, let us try to understand what is a characteristic. What do I mean by characters or characteristic? It is a feature, a quality belonging to a particular organism. Like whenever I talk about any organism, it will have certain features which are very specific to that organism. For example, here you can see a couple of organisms, right? For example, if I talk about a bird, birds can fly. So flight is a feature or it is a characteristic of a bird so it is something very specific to a bird whenever i talk of bird any feature or any characteristic that you can quickly relate to a bird is flight when i talk about fishes swim is something which you can very quickly relate to fishes for human beings human beings can walk run jump think so these are some of the things which you which some of the characteristic of human beings when I talk about trees, so they are immobile, they cannot move from one place to another. They can prepare their own food, they are photosynthetic. So they are some of the features of a tree. So based upon these characters, that means based upon features which are specific to a particular organism, they are divided into different groups. And that process is known as classification. Now the question is, why do we need to classify? The reason is very simple. Since the number of organisms which we have is very, very huge, so it is not possible to study each, to identify each and every organism and then name each and every organism. That is why we will put them into groups. Now, let us take one example to understand the significance of classification, that how classification makes things simpler and easier. Let us suppose you have shifted to a new house. So you have a plenty of things to be arranged in the new house. So let us suppose these are some of the things which I have shown here, but I'm pretty sure that when you actually shift to a new house, you have a lot of other things as well. So let us suppose if you have these many things, there is one way that you go to that house and you dump everything in one room. Now, wherever you need something, you will just have to search around the entire room to get that thing. And there is another possibility that you arrange different things in different rooms based on some characters. For example, in your house, you decide one room as kitchen, you decide one room as a study room, you decide another room as a bathroom. So you have separated your entire house into different parts. And now you start dividing things or you start classifying these things into one of these areas. For example, the mixer grinder. It is something which is used in kitchen. So you put it in the kitchen. Carrot, which is again used for cooking. So you put it in the kitchen. A microwave, again in the kitchen. A pen, which is a stationary and which is more useful in a study room, is placed to the study room. 
So now if you start arranging things in this fashion, what happens? When you need something, let us suppose if somebody needs the eraser, so now you do not have to hunt the entire house for that eraser. You know what is the purpose of eraser. The purpose of eraser is to delete stuff which you have written. So this is the probability that it will be found in which room is more study room. So you directly go to the study room and find the eraser. Right. So this is the advantage of classification. So if you classify things, you do not have to hunt the entire house. You can just hunt one part of the house to which it belongs to. So when you need something like knife or a fry pan or a mixer grinder, you do not hunt the entire house. You just go to the kitchen and search for it. So searching the kitchen is much, much easier than searching the entire house. Right. So that is the importance or that is the advantage of classification and that is why we classify living organisms as well. So that when we want to know about a particular organism, so we do not have to identify each and every organism. So if we identify a group with a specific characters, so if we find any new organism whose characters matches with that group, so we can directly consider that this organism can also be put into this group. So similar is the case for living organisms. So when you have this huge variety, you can instead of studying them individually, we can divide them into groups and then we can give binomial names to each of those groups. So that is how the need of classification is. So it is not possible to study about each existing living organism is detailed. So that is one very important and primary reason for classification. Classifying organisms into groups make it easier to know about different life forms because here you do not have to remember so many things about so many organisms. You just have a couple of groups and you can remember some handful characters relating to each group. So that means you get a rough idea about the huge variety of life forms that exist on earth. Classification helps us to understand the evolution of all life forms to a large extent. So now if you understand the process or the concept of classification, because how do we classify object? We classify object based on characteristics. Now, once you are aware of the characteristics, you gradually get an idea about which organisms originated before and which other organisms originated from those previous organisms. So we tend to get some idea about the evolution of life forms. Scientific naming of organisms is based on classification. As I said, it is not at all possible to name each and every living organism. So instead, we name organisms based on the groups into which they are classified. So now the question is, what should be the basis of classification? On what basis we should classify organisms into different groups? So again, let us look back at the same example. So when you are arranging things in your house, so what was your basis of classification? On what basis were you keeping things in different rooms? I mean, why did you keep the mixer grinder or the carrot in the kitchen? because they have some characteristic which are similar, like both of them are helpful in cooking. Or when you talk about the microwave, so even it helps in cooking. When you talk about pens or books or notebooks, they all help in study, so they are all kept in the study room. So based upon some basic characteristics, since they share the same characteristics, therefore they are put into the same group. So the basis of classification is always the characteristics of the organisms. So for living organisms also, those who share same characteristics will fall in the same group. Like if you have your study room and you have so many different books, now you want to classify the books subject wise. You want to keep all the maths book in one rack, the chemistry books in the other rack and the physics books in the third rack. So what do you do? So those which are of the same characteristics, all the maths book, one rack, all chemistry, one, all physics, one. So everything which share same characters will be in the same group. Similarly, let us look at another example to understand the same concept. Now let us suppose you have 
a group of objects which consist of fruits, vegetables and flowers. Now, if you have everything messed up and mixed up like this, so if you need something out of this, it will be very difficult to find that out because everything is messed up. So it is difficult and time consuming to find out that one thing out of so many things. For example, if you want an apple from here. So since there are so many stuffs, it, it will take, it will be more time consuming to find out that apple. So what do you do? You plan to classify them into three groups. First group, vegetable. Second group, fruits. And third group, flowers. So this is how you segregate them. You keep take out all the vegetables in the first plate all the fruits in the second plate and all the flowers in the third plate. So now you have classified them into three groups. Now if you want to take out an apple out of it, you are not bothered about the first and the third plate. You will concentrate only on the second plate and it is easier for you to find out the apple from this second plate now. Now if you further want to make things simple, so you will classify it further, right? How will you classify it further? So you will classify like this. Maybe out of these vegetables, you will take all the pepper together. Doesn't matter which color it is. You will take all the carrots together. You will take all the cabbage together. Similarly, from the fruits basket, you will take all the apples together, all the mangoes together. Again, from the flowers, you will take all the roses together, the lilies together and the sunflowers together. So now if you want to take out an apple out of this entire bunch, you will only go to this group of apple and take one out. So it is even more easy now, right? So when you have classified it further. Now, if you want to make things even more simple, what will you do? You will classify it further. How? Maybe you will take all the red pepper together, all the yellow pepper together, all the green pepper together, right? So that is how you can classify it further. So if you look at this process of classification, on what basis are you classifying things? So the first way of classification was on the basis of whether the, whether the object is a fruit or a flower or a vegetable. So every, all vegetables in one plate. So everything which shared a common characteristic, that was the vegetable, they were in one plate. Everything that was fruit was on another plate. Right? Now the next step it was based on what vegetable it is. So everything which is pepper is in one plate. Right? So that means characteristic or the basic characteristic is the one which forms the basis of classification. So similarly if you apply the same logic to living organisms or to animals. For example you would have seen that if you compare yourself with a friend of yours. Do you think that both of you would look exactly similar? No. But there will be a lot of things similar between you and your friend. For example, both of you will have two hands, both of you will have ten fingers, you will have two eyes, one nose, two ears. There will be a lot of things which will be similar between you and your friend, but even then you are not exactly similar. Now if you compare yourself with a monkey, do you think that there is a lot of similarity? No. Now you have more differences. Now you have less similarities. But, <clears throat> but still now also you have some similarities. For example, even for monkeys, they have got four limbs, right, as human beings have. Now if you compare yourself with an organism like a dog, the similarities again reduce more. You compare yourself with a bird or a fish or an insect or a microorganism like bacteria. So as you go ahead, the similarities keep reducing. So what do you think? If I want to classify organisms, you and your, the possibility that you and your friend will fall in the same group, that is more, or the possibility that you and the bacteria will fall in the same group will be more. Obviously you and your friend, right? Because you both share more common characteristics. Clear? So you see, during the process of classification, you also get an idea that what are those organisms with which you are more similar to. Now, more similar you have, you share the more the more the similarities you share with a particular organism, that means that more closely you are related to that organism.
So we can say that the more basic characteristics should be considered for classification. So whenever we want to classify objects, we should look for the basic characteristics. So if those basic characteristics are more in common, they should be classified under the same group together. Right? So I think the idea of classification is clear to you now that why do we classify and how do we classify? Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.